Well, I'll be speaking about the reasons why people make choices between foods and the reasons why they choose to eat the amount of food they eat and why they feel full when they've eaten certain foods and not others and what makes people overconsume. Now one of the most salient features of humans as eaters is that they are omnivores. They're not herbivores and they're not carnivores. Herbivores consume a large amount of low density food and spend a lot of time doing it. Carnivores do the opposite. They spend a small amount of time eating high energy density food. Omnivores, in contrast, have the whole world as their food table. Their eating repertoire is enormous and the range of foods they can consume is incredible. And this means that for omnivores, as humans are, choices between foods is not an option, it's an obligation. They have to choose because no single food will provide all the nutrients that they want. And this means, of course, that eating seen as an omnivorous activity is highly dependent on the environment because the environment can offer small numbers of choices. In the most extreme case, you have one food or no food. And on the other hand, as in our environment, a huge choice of foods, a baffling choice of foods. So omnivores find it much more difficult to select the correct foods when there are many choices available and when those choices are manipulated artificially. Many people see eating as being under very simple form of control. In fact, eating is the act of reaching out with the hand to get food and bring it to the mouth. And in principle, we can control this action with our brains. It's under voluntary control. But in practice, we know that that is very difficult. If it was as easy as that, then there would not be a problem with overconsumption. There would not be a problem with obesity. So eating and appetite control clearly is much more complex than that. And the problem is to do with these choices. What determines our choices? In part, we can say they are fulfilling biological needs and our biological system clearly has needs. On the other hand, choices are determined by availability of particular commodities in the environment and the way in which those commodities are presented and the degree of attraction that they have. So if you think of food itself as an entity and why we would choose it, and, and let's for the moment regard choice as something which is conscious, then we would make a choice based on the taste of food or the texture of food or the appropriateness of food. But it's something to do with the way in which food is constructed and how it appears. Taste is, of course, particularly important and everybody thinks of taste as being the primary guide for food consumption. And that means some foods are preferred more than others. Some foods are unfairly advantaged because they taste good. Uh, and there's not much secret about what these foods might be. The, the sweet, high-fat foods we know are particularly well preferred and overconsumed. But if we stop for a moment, we can think about reasons why that might be. Because the sweet taste and the fatty texture actually confer advantageous properties of foods. They, are, they signify energy yielding foods. And therefore, these tastes have an evolutionary advantage. They signify foods which are useful biologically. And this is why people can overconsume them and are attracted to them. We all find food tasty. Why are some people more attracted to food than others? And yes, why? And that's a good question because there is no very good answer to it. Or rather, there are two answers to that. Uh, one is that obese people have a defect in the sensing of pleasure from foods and therefore they consume more to get their appropriate level of pleasure. And the other theory is that obese people find foods hyper-pleasurable and therefore they consume more uh, because they are driven by the pleasure that they receive from the foods. But there's one thing very important here and that is that we can't make one single statement about why people eat or don't eat that is good for everybody. This is not one size fits all. The obese, for example, are not a single homogeneous category of people. They are as different from each other as lean people are different from each other. So one very important message from all of this work on appetite control 
is that we're dealing with incredible amounts of human diversity and different human preferences. So we should try to avoid single categorical explanations that apply to everybody. Solving the problem of obesity is not easy uh, because it probably requires not more scientific evidence, but it requires political will and social action on a huge scale rather than some new scientific breakthrough. We've had scientific breakthroughs in the past which have promised a lot but haven't yielded the sort of management practices or treatments that can be used on a mass scale.